Refine hard mat and refine soft mat are both found under the mat category. And they're both pretty self-explanatory. Refined soft mat is for dealing with alpha mats that are soft or that have semi-transparent pixels in them. For example, right about here, when Shia is waving his arms down, we have a lot of motion blur happening. So our mat for that layer is very soft. We can see this really clearly if I go into my key light effect, which I've pre-keyed this footage using, and view the screen mat. This is the mat being used to control the alpha channel. Now I've applied some color correction, so don't be confused by the color tinting. But it's very clear that most of this mat is pretty hard, but there are soft areas because of that motion blur. Now there are lots of different ways of handling this type of a problem with an alpha mat, but after the addition of the Roto Brush and Refine Edge tools, Refine Soft Mat became an effect that we can use to help clean that up. So I'm gonna bring this effect out right after key light and immediately it looks a whole lot more natural. If I turn this off and back on, you can see that all of those green pixels that are existing in that motion blur that weren't getting keyed out or corrected are taken care of. The motion blur is now much more natural with that color blending from his skin into those semi-transparent pixels. It's also done some work around the outside edges of his shirt because that's what this effect is doing. It's looking around the outside edges of your alpha mat. Let's look at the controls. We have calculate edge details. If I turn this off, it's going to ignore the color information around the edges of the alpha mat and instead just clean up the mat a little bit. But as you can see, that semi-transparent area is showing through to that green background without it, so that does make a pretty big difference. The next property is additional edge radius, and you can think of this like a brush size or a stroke size all the way around the mat. It's currently set to 10, so think of a 10 pixel brush going all the way around the edge and that is where it's looking for the edge and referencing those pixels to fill out all of this semi-transparent pixels color information. If I turn this down too low, then we're gonna get that green spill back in. But you should dial this into whatever the smallest number is to fill in the information that you're trying to correct. So I think a value of 4.3 is actually gonna work just fine and that makes a pretty big difference. I have this checkbox to view the edge region and this makes it really easy to visualize that edge radius. If I turn this down, it shrinks it. If I increase it, it'll get thicker. I'm gonna set that back to 4.3 and turn that off. Next, we have smooth feather contrast and shift edge controls. These all have to do with that edge region. It's controlling how that edge actually looks. So if I really crank up the smoothness, this is going to smooth out my mat geometrically. So let me turn it back down to zero and then turn it way up to its max of 50. If you're getting really harsh edges, you can smooth that out as much as you feel like you need to to get a good result. Next is feather, and that will simply just blur out that edge of the alpha channel. So if you want to take a harder edge and just feather it out ever so slightly, you could do that or really exaggerate it. Then we have contrast, which might seem a little silly after adding feather, but these are happening in order. So if I were to smooth a little bit and then feather a little bit, and then say that's a little bit too soft, then I could add contrast to it, and it's going to look much different than if I were to just take the feather off completely. Next we have shift edge, and this is just an expand or contract for that mat. If I make it a higher number, it's going to spread that out, and if I dial it back, it chokes the mat in. We have this chatter reduction option. If I turn that from off to more detailed, then it's going to attempt to remove artifacting that comes from digital compression. So if I turn off my background and switch to my alpha channel view and turn this off and back on, you can see that it's smoothing out these details that are a little chunky, a little pixelated. And I could even change this to smoother, which does take longer to render, but it is a much more intense reduction. So clearly that's not gonna work for this particular clip. But with either of those options, I could turn the reduce chatter down so it's not so extreme. I think for this particular clip, if I was going to do any chatter reduction, I would leave it on more detailed and then just dial this in however I feel like it should be. So right about there, we're getting a nice smooth mat. I'm gonna turn this back to RGB. And then look at this checkbox, more motion blur. If I check that on, it's going to allow us to custom dial in the actual motion blur for this refined mat. I twirled this open and now we have the ability to choose how many samples of motion blur there are. So I could increase this to 16 to get something a little bit smoother. I could turn the shutter angle up higher to get longer streaks of motion blur, or I could dial it back to say 90 and have less motion blur. 
I can also check on this higher quality switch, which will take longer, but can produce better results. And I think that it is making a more natural looking motion blur, so I'm gonna leave that on. Next, we have decontaminate edge colors, and this is a built-in spill suppressor for the refined soft matte effect. If I uncheck it, it's gonna leave all of those green pixels back in. If I check it on, it removes that spill. We can turn down how much if we need to bring back some of the original colors. We can extend that decontamination where it's smoothed, but I'm not actually smoothing anything, so I'll actually just increase that quickly and then turn that extend where smoothed on and off to show you what it's doing. You see these areas that it brought back in from that keyed out footage, it's going to remove those. All right, I'm gonna turn that off and turn my smoothness all the way back down. Next, we have increase radius. So if I needed to, I could increase that decontamination further than its default. And I can also view that. So this is a good way to visualize just where that decontamination is taking place. That's it for Refined Soft Matte. It's very worth knowing about because certain keys are just trickier than others, especially when dealing with motion blur. And if we compare this frame, I'll just duplicate Jaya, move them over, and take off this Refined Soft Matte, add a key cleaner effect right after key light, and an advanced spill suppressor right after key cleaner. I'll actually turn off the background so it's really easy to see this. I think the resulting matte on the Refine Soft Matte copy is producing more natural looking results. It's not always the case, which is why it's important to know your options. If one method doesn't do the greatest job, you should be able to experiment with other methods to try and get something that looks better. All right, I'm gonna quickly rename this Soft Matte, and this one, Key Cleaner, turn that one off, duplicate soft matte, and I'll rename this hard matte, and then we'll take a look at the hard matte effect. So I'm gonna search for hard matte, add refine hard matte right after key light, and show you that immediately, this is not the type of clip that I would want to use refine hard matte on. Now I don't have any specific footage that I would use refine hard matte on, but think about if you were shooting an inanimate object, like a box on top of a green screen, or a car, something that's not organic, doesn't have a lot of fine details, refine hard matte is designed to improve that type of matte. So I'm just paused right here on a frame of Shia where there is no motion blur. And for the most part, he doesn't have any fine details. Yes, he does have this hair at the top, but otherwise it's a pretty solid outlined mat. So let me turn this off and back on to show you that it's removing some of those edge pixels, but most of these controls are identical to what we had in Refine Soft Mat. They're just set to different defaults. So Feather, Contrast, Shift Edge, and Reduce Chatter are all identical. Let me set them all to zero and then we'll just increase the feather. That's just blurring out the mat. But in addition to the alpha channel, it's also bringing those edge pixels and feathering them inward. So at high numbers, it's making it look really ghostly or very halo-y. So that value probably shouldn't be at a high number, which is why the default is only two. Next is contrast, which really needs to be cranked up to really be able to notice it. But if I zoom in here nice and close, with it at zero, this is nice and soft, but I can increase it to get something a little bit more crisp. We have shift edge, which again is just a simple choker. It will expand the edge in a positive direction and in a negative value, it's going to choke that mat. I'll switch back to my alpha view one more time and there really isn't any chattering going on on this mat, but we have this reduced chatter value to be able to try and reduce that if there is any. I'll switch back to RGB. We have the option to include motion blur. So if I again go to that frame where we have lots of motion blur, I can turn that on and off, but it's not making nearly as much of an adjustment as refined soft matte, because the real difference between these two effects is that hard matte works with opaque pixels and soft matte works with semi-transparent pixels. So if you were filming something on top of a green screen with a very high shutter speed, there would be little to no motion blur. Using motion blur would allow you to generate some motion blur into that footage and give you all these controls just like refined soft matte to be able to modify it. We still have decontaminate edge color controls with all the same values that Refine Soft Matte had. But that's it for Refine Hard Matte. Each of these effects are very powerful, but they have very different applications. Fortunately, all of the controls of Refine Hard Matte are identical to Refine Soft Matte. That main difference is just what it's being applied to. But that's everything you need to know about Refine Hard Matte and Refine Soft Matte.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.